I, but they said they was working on simulators. They had simulators. They went to school in 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 in, uh, in, in Florida. Well, listen at this here now in the <laughs> in the paper. Flight school owned by Warren Buffett. <laughs> oh, okay. Again, you look at the... And you got uh, Warren Buffett at the Moffett Air, uh, Air Force Base with hundreds of CEOs on September 11th, the morning, in a secret meeting. Yep. Including yep, yep. dozens that were supposed to be in the World Trade Center that morning. Yep. Now, watch this. The Boston Globe. Hmm? Uh, bah, 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 bah. Uh, uh, this is crazy. September the 18th, 2001. Flight school says FBI trained suspects prior to hijacking, okay? And so and so the interesting thing is when the Condoleezza Rice, when that story ran in the, the uh, San Francisco Chronicle, not another paper ran it. Now, that Friday, September the, must have been the, 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 the no, the Friday before, uh, Friday before, but that Friday after, San Francisco Chronicle front page story says ex Secretary of State George Schultz had received information the Friday before not to go into New York to a certain meeting. Here's the ex Secretary. Not one paper ran that story. That's right. And then CNBC admitted that the Joint Chiefs were going to have a scheduled meeting September 11th in New York, but canceled it the day before. Yep, yep, yep. And so when you when you stop and think about, you know, so now you can get your message out there a little bit better because you got all these internet radios. And so when I stop and think about the the first of the month, uh, headlines: J.P. Morgan bankers leaped to his death from skyscraper in Hong Kong. Do you realize they call it suicide? Well, let's let them get by with that for a minute. To his death. There's 18 suicide of major bankers since the first of this year. Yeah, and it's more than that last year. It's but yeah. What do you think's going on? The New York Times have. Let's even say if it was suicide, these ain't no little Tiaz. One of the guys they said commit suicide. He just received a 300 million dollar bonus. He uh, he said that they shot himself in the head eight times. <laughs> <laughs> so why? It just play it straight. How come? That story wasn't published. Now, let me show you, especially you Americans that love America. Let me show you what it is to love. I ran for the president, the first Negro in the history of America to run for president of the United States in 1968. So people said, well, uh, what about Jesse that? No, they ran in the primary. And this president now, Obama, not won the primary. You sitting now talking to the only Negro that ran. Now, I can't say that now because Obama ran, but all the other black folks, Shirley Chisholm, they was running in the primaries. Now, let me tell you what happened. They was planning on tricking. This was a Rockefeller trick. They was planning on tricking the election, okay, to put Rockefeller in the White House through Nixon. Nixon didn't know nothing about it. Nelson Rockefeller could not read or write, so he would have a hard time running for president because he was he, he, he couldn't read a speech. And his brother David, one of the greatest bankers in the world, couldn't read or write. Now, when white folk can't read or write, they call it dyslexic. When black folk can't read or write, they say he didn't have a daddy at home. Okay, <laughs> let me tell you something about this daddy at home crap. I was in the military. There was no war going on. I wasn't married. I didn't have a family. But if I was married and had a family, as long as America's telling you to go to the front line and kill somebody you don't know, that seems not to affect your family if you get killed. But if I walk out the house on my own, oh, the problem in the black community ain't no black man at home. Well, what about the Italian mafia? 99% of the mafia was Italian. Now, 99% of the Italians wasn't mafia. They go to church every day. Now, you tell me about family values? Oh, mama mia. And they go confess to the priest, Father Superior, I, uh, I, need, I, I need you to forgive me quick. I killed 27 people last night, and you got to do it quick. I got 12 more to kill by noon. That, that don't seem to count, okay? But when it gets to me, 
I can take a prostitute after this show around the world with me, and as long as I call that prostitute my secretary, that's a tax write-off. Y'all scared to mess with them. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about them people out there that think they love America. They don't dare mess with the mob. I mess with everybody out here who's wrong. And all I say, if you ever kill me, you didn't get an innocent bystander. Now, let me tell you why I'm telling you about that election. They was going to trick it so Nixon wouldn't win. Okay? And that's why they shot at George Wallace and meant to kill him because he would take votes away from them. Okay? Now, the election was on the 4th of November, 1968. This is the Wall Street Journal, y'all. Let me say it again, the Wall Street Journal. That Friday, hmm, November the 7th, 1968, Electronic Computers Goof gives Gregory 9 million votes. Did you hear that? Some, and they go ahead to say that the, the big computer in New York City declared Dick Gregory two hours after the election the next president of the United States, okay? Because I got 9 million votes in Pennsylvania alone. That wasn't meant for me. Somebody hooked the wire up wrong. And so they had to shut all them computers down at midnight, okay? Now, that's y'all's um, democracy. Anytime you have a democracy, look, if our democracy is so good, why are we running all over the world trying to force it down people's throat with a gun? Anything good, you don't have to force on nobody. Ask a prostitute, okay? And so consequently, when, when we wake up and see where this is going, it's too late. Okay, it's too late. And so consequently, what we looking at, oh, yeah, there's warriors out here. If they kill me tomorrow, I died. I told my wife and family, it's not about us. Liberation is not in my house. And I spent millions of dollars. It meant don't send the children to college. I was willing to pay that. And so consequently, all the stuff, I've been doing it for so long, though I've got powerful white folks that have to do it. They hate they got to do it, so they bring it to me. And so consequently, if, if, if your listeners look up the island of Diego Garcia, how it factors in, now listen to this, to the Malaysian flight, the ABC put that out. <laughs> they slipped. All you got to do is pull it up. March the yeah, that's 18th. the big. Uh, that's the big uh, U.S. military base. Oh, it's a big, nasty, vicious military base where they do all kind of dirty things. And if you want to find that plane, look there for it. Okay. And so, consequently, what we what we looking at is now. Now, here's how it breaks down. There was eighteen. It was more than that, but the top group was eighteen scientists. On that plane. Mm -hmm. Where did they work? They were they were they were Asians, but they worked out of Texas, Texas Institute, Texas Institute, and connected with Boeing. And so they wasn't going there. They was going on another assignment. See what America will do? It will let a lots of companies, lots of companies. They will let them uh, factor stuff out because we got a Congress. I understand. What's your bottom in. line? Because I want to play a clip of your new film and have you okay. back in a few weeks to get into that. DickGregory.com to find the film. Um, that's Unsung Hollywood. But briefly, what do you think happened with the plane? The plane, well, you got first, you say, Malaysian uh, plane. 20 passengers work for electronic warfare and military radar. Yes. Okay, now. They had just came up with something, and what I understand, real evil stuff they doing. And so the patent, so it was four of them out of the group that had filed for patents, and the fifth person, person was the Carlisle group, okay? Yes, I knew that. Now, when those four disappear, get killed, okay, the patent was not granted till four days after the plane was missing, okay? The patent. Now. If you had one of those patents, your family don't get it because the plane was missing or you were dead 
before you got a Well, I've seen this before. When you've got like 50 uh, Egyptian top generals on an aircraft, it just disappears. When you've got Congressman McDonald on a plane with key people, it disappears. We've seen this before, and I've said from the beginning that it could be a brain heist or a way to get rid of some people, and they just re redirect it to a military base. And, and Dick Gregory, I think you're on it again. Promise to come back in the next two weeks, commercial it. free. Uh, it's always amazing. Briefly, we're going to play a few minutes from the new film uh, that folks can find out about at DickGregory.com. 60 seconds on Unsung Hollywood. My pleasure, brother. Thank you. Briefly, tell us about Unsung Hollywood. And we're going to play. Well, Unsung Hollywood is where it's a black TV thing, uh, TV one, owned by Kathy Hughes and her son. And they decided to tell the world about a lot of black folks that you wouldn't see on NBC, CBS, and ABC. And so this year was a new series, and uh, they, they filmed me. And just the American people, just they, I mean, they see new things, see things about me now they never heard before, okay? They never knew what I was involved in. I was about to say, John Singleton said they only allow a certain stereotype of black people out, the big director. And so that's basically what this is about. We'll have you back in the next two weeks uh, to talk more about Unsung Hollywood. We'll end the show with a couple minutes from the intro of the TV special. See the whole thing at DickGregory.com. Here it is. My Ladies and gentlemen, Dick Gregory. I can say thank you very much, and when they say this show features living color, you better believe it. 1961, Dick Gregory was at the top of his game, changing the way America talked and joked about race. I found out that cold weather makes it very nice for race relations. <laughs> Last month, when it was 15 below zero in Chicago, I walked out of a nightclub, a drunk walked up to me, he said, why don't you get back to Africa where you belong and take me with you? <laughs> it's beyond skillful. It's almost like he made it up. He invented the whole concept of addressing this really serious issue. There was never, ever a black comic who talked about racism to white America and made jokes of it. I had to fly to Kansas City, Missouri the other day to help out a friend of mine, a white cat who moved into an all-colored neighborhood. <laughs> and some colored bigot burned a watermelon on his front lawn. And I remember the Dick Gregory book, Nigger. And I was like, wow. The idea that he was radical enough to challenge both white and black sensibilities was really major. But he said the book is to his mother, so that every time she hears the word, she'll think they're talking about her son's book. <laughs> Gregory's daring riffs turned him into stand-up's first black superstar. I went from $1,500 a year to $3 million in the next 18 months. At one time, he was the highest paid black entertainer in America. I was the hippest thing. I was like something new on the planet. But at the height of his success, Dick Gregory turned his back on stand-up in favor of taking a stand. I had witnessed Dick Gregory turn down thousands of dollars. He said, I would rather be free than rich. He went back down south on some, like some Harriet Tubman like I gotta go get the others. This was for real for Dick. Not only... You are listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. In the last 50 years, iodine has been phased out of our staple foods and replaced with the halogen bromine, a practice now banned in nations around the world. Guess what else is in the halogen family? 